What's up everybody? Drew here from Redbeard's Workshop and today we're going to be making more maps. I don't know why I did a creepy voice. It's not it's not a creepy project. It just maps like uh. So if you've been following the channel, you know that I did make a map video uh, where I created sort of like a, a map of like an underground mine that my players are probably actually going to be encountering fairly shortly. Um, but I did want to give them a big world map. Now, I had the original one that I showed in that video where I drew it out. So they kind of had an idea of what everything was going to be and where to go and everything that one of the NPCs was going to give them for the world that they're playing in. Um, but I screwed it up. So my typical technique for aging paper is to uh, kind of dab it or soak it in coffee, uh, drain it, and then bake it in the oven. Um, now, this works typically for about 10 minutes at like, like the lowest setting. You can put like 200 degrees Fahrenheit or something like that. Um, but this paper that I'm using is too big for the oven. It's not going to fit. Um, so I have to find a way to do it outside of the oven and I have to age the paper before I draw the map because when I drew the map and then poured the coffee on it, unlike printer ink, the type of ink I was using ran when the coffee hit the paper. So, you know, I was used to printed stuff working and I didn't think that the kind of pen I was using wouldn't work for this type of aging. So I'm going to age the paper first and then I'm going to draw my map on there for my players to use as time's kind of running out for me to make this map for them. Um, so today what I'm planning on doing is I'm going to uh, put some paper towels down on my table here. I'm going to put some uh, my my crafting mats over top, lay the paper down, and I'm going to use a sponge, and I'm going to use my coffee here, and I'm going to kind of soak the paper right on the table and then I'm going to use my trusty heat gun that I've used in many projects and just painstakingly take my time to go over it and see if this works. I don't know if it will. I've never used a heat gun for this purpose before um, so it very well could not work. I don't know but that's kind of what the channel is about is trying things and seeing if they work. Uh, just like in the Gladiator Arena video when I poured some resin and it went horribly I showed you guys the mistake and what I did to fix it. So hopefully this works. If it doesn't work, I'm still going to put the video up so you guys can see, uh, you know, a failed attempt at something and we can try to find a solution for it. So let's get to some paper aging.
So you'll notice here the way I'm holding the pencil, and I do an outline in pencil first so that I can always adjust it later. Um, but I will use, when I'm holding this, I'm holding it from the very top of the pencil. That way my hand is not going to be steady. Um, this isn't as important for the pencil layer, uh, but when you're doing it with your marker or whatever your final line is going to be, you definitely want to hold it from the top. The reason being is that your hand will naturally shake and like uh, kind of dance along the paper, giving you more natural uh, shorelines rather than having you know straight lines around your map because that's not realistic, right? If you want to look more like real topography, I mean, that's the way maps look. Uh, shorelines are bumpy and have escarpments and strange things and bays and inlets and peninsulas. So uh, I find holding it from the top and just letting it kind of drag along the paper it's going to make those naturally you can always put a little bit of a shake into your hand too if you want um, but you're going to have a cooler more realistic map if you do it this way Now, I also highly recommend that before you put in your landscaping, like your uh, your mountains, your trees, whatever, uh, identify where your towns and cities are going to be, and then make sure you label them. I end up putting in my mountains and stuff first because I didn't have a whole lot of cities around them, so it didn't matter. But the problem is, if you try to write the names in later, and you've already put in all your trees and mountains and such, you're going to have a really hard time finding enough space to put the names in. Um, so I found this little trick on a, on a short video that I watched either on YouTube or Instagram or something. And I thought, oh, that's genius. You put the, you put all the outside details in for the shoreline, the map, the islands, whatever it is, and then identify your cities, write the names in and then put everything around them. So that's what we're doing here.
So this is going to be by far the longest portion of the video. So what I'm going to do is actually speed it up a little bit faster than what's happening now. Um, so I actually learned a good trick for making maps, which is to write everything out first, put the names in there, and then put the trees around it. That way you're not squeezing words in and making the map look worse, which is why I wrote them all first. Um, and on this, vid this little short video that I saw, the person used more of these like kind of circular mound shapes for trees uh, to illustrate the forest in, in their map. Now, it was a much smaller map, and it looked good on that one, but as I'm doing it here, I'm looking at it, and I'm just thinking, like, this doesn't look as good as the other version of forest that I had on my previous map, where I just had, you know, a few trees to really show what I was doing, and then left some blank space in between. Um, and so I got to a point here where I started to sort of morph these rounded trees back into the triangular shapes and I'm going to go with what I had on my original map and abandon this, this new technique, which probably looks good. I just, I didn't prefer it. So anyway, I'm going to be doing a lot of trees here and then outlining the trees so that the forests are very clear on the map. Uh, then I'm going to put a compass on the bottom and we're done. So I'm just going to speed this up for you guys and we can get to the end of the video. Hey guys, welcome back. Thank you very much for watching the video. Why am I wearing my leather hat? I don't know, I just felt like it. I usually wear baseball caps, but I wore all mine to the gym and they're all dirty and I gotta wash them. Anyway, <laughs> thank you guys very much for watching. I know a lot of my videos, I end up creating something kind of complicated. I'll make something with, you know, a lot of parts and a lot of a process to it that takes me 
you know, anywhere from two to eight hours to make something. And then I got to cut it into like a, a 40 minute video or a 20 minute or 30 minute video. And it's really hard to do that because I feel like when I speed things up, I skip over a lot of it. So it's nice to show you that there are very simple and really good projects that you can make uh, that don't take a lot of time. Um, that don't take a lot of materials that are hard to obtain. I'm really excited to, for my players to be able to use this map now. As you saw in the, the end of the video there, I had made it once and I took a picture of it. And then I tried to age the paper after I drew everything on it, which was really dumb. Um, I've been able to print things off and age it, but I can't use that kind of marker, obviously. So I had to age the paper first and then uh, draw the map on it. But because of the technique we used with the air gun rather than cooking in the oven, I was able to make a much larger map which is a better prop, I think, for my players anyway, and I'm really excited about it. So I hope you guys see that if you want to do any kind of projects, aging paper, if it's for a school project or just for little fun things you want to do, using tea or coffee to stain the paper and then bake it or dry it however you wish is a great way to do that for, you know, whether it's, it's props for gaming or if it's just fun little projects you want to do with your kids or with your friends. It's really easy to do. And again, that's the main point of the channel is you know, how do I show people that art can be really fun and actually pretty easy to do? And that's a, this is a great project because it is so simple, but depending on what you want to do with it, that's what takes it to the next level and makes it cool, makes it unique. Um, and I'm, I'm hopeful that you guys enjoyed this video and learned how to do something new, something cool, uh, and follow back for more videos here on Redbeard's Workshop.